A few years ago, I went through some of the most difficult times of my life. I was jobless, I was homeless, I, I was in the deepest need that I could possibly be. But in those times, God was with me and God had orchestrated and ordained for me to go through those difficulties. I remember having $5, I felt like, oh, I have so much money. I would take that money and I would go to, I'd walk all the way to Sheets or a, a Burger King and work on my laptop and do my design work and just continue to pray deeply that God would, uh, would just, would bring forth the next step in my life that he had for me. But here's some lessons that God taught me in that two to three year period of, of difficulty. The first two things are financially based. Debt is crippling. Be free from its bondage. And this is very basic wisdom. If you read through the book of the Proverbs, it says that the borrower is slave to the lender. I don't think the Bible's saying it's wrong ever to borrow from people, but there's a certain level of slavery and bondage that you have to these people in where you can't do anything and everything you want because there's always the obligation paid off. Be free from this bondage. Do everything you can to pay off your debt. And then the next lesson is very similar. Uh, financial competence allows us to sue God's blessings most effectively in our lives. What I mean by that is the more you have control over your finances, the more you have discipline and discernment in regards to your money, the more you can steward, which is use effectively what God has given you, not just to keep it and hoard it for yourself, but to give to others and help others in need, because that is, as believers, what we should be doing. And the next three are about people. Number one, people are complex. They're not just black and white. I myself am a very black and white person, so my temptation is always to say one person and this person is this way and that person is that way. But in reality, uh, it's much more unique and, and sometimes frustrating. I know there are so many times where I get so angry with someone and then also see their kindness and it frustrates me because I'm like, why can't you just be one way or the other? Be all mean or all nice. But we're human beings, we're complex. Lesson two is this. Don't write off people who've offended you once. I think it takes a, a certain level of humility to understand that people offend us and sometimes they're not meaning to and sometimes they are. But I've seen people in my own life who've offended me and I have to actively say, God, help me forgive them. Help me move past this. And beautiful friendships have blossomed from that. So don't write people off for, her, for offending you once. And then the last one is like that. Forgive everyone no matter the offense. Of course, it's easier said than done. It's very difficult to forgive people, especially when they've done heinous things. But God calls us to repent. God calls us to forgive those and love our enemies. Because the Word of God is very clear. In Matthew 6, 14 through 15, Jesus says this, If you forgive those who sin against you, your Father in heaven will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. It's a pretty big deal. We must forgive others no matter the offense. Again, easier said than done. But pray for God's guidance. We we'll continue to give you measures of mercy and peace as you go forth in forgiveness. The next lesson is this. Be in the word continually. It is our daily manna. When I was going through that difficulty for, for years, I was still being sustained by God. He would still give me just enough to go, to go on the, to the next day. And... In those times where we're just holding on, God does give us enough strength, but we have to go to the word. Our word is our foundation of truth. Don't rush to pastors. Don't rush to, to other books and another comforts of the world. Go to Christ first and foremost. He will sustain you and comfort you. Sometimes all we need is just a single Bible verse to hold on to. Deal with problems as soon as they crop up. Don't delay. I feel like that's pretty straightforward, but when difficulty comes up, when you have problems with your friends or family or work, take it from me, deal with it immediately. There are lots of people that they will just hold on like, oh, it's not that big of a deal, but trust me, deal with things ahead of time. That goes for illnesses, that goes for jobs, that goes for family and friends, interpersonal relationships, whatever it is, financial stuff, deal with it ASAP. Because tomorrow's problems will catch up to us, so deal with it today. These next four deal with God's relationship with us. It is truly God who opens and closes doors. I think sometimes it's really easy to forget that 
it's really God in control. God is sovereign. God is the one orchestrating everything in our lives. And we think it's all up to us. If we feel like God has given us a destiny or whatever, or, or a path in life to follow, we feel like oh, I have to do everything within my power to make sure it happens. But that's arrogant. Trust in God. Because God is the one who opens and closes doors. And so we just have to trust in him. When, if he opens it, walk through it. If he closes it, don't bang it down. And the next one is like it. Well, the Holy Spirit is our advocate, not man. So many times when I was going through difficulty, I had the temptation to just try to fix it myself. Or maybe if I got it in with this person, that person, then maybe it can, it can fix itself. And, and, but I just realized the Holy Spirit is our advocate. He is the one advocating for me. I don't have to put on my best face and make sure I'm ultra convincing to certain people. Like, if God wants you to do something, you just have to walk in obedience because the Holy Spirit will guide you. Next one is, God isn't just black and white. There are things about his character we may never understand. I would say, for this, see the story of Job. There are lots of things where we're like, God, why are you doing these things? Why do you allow this to happen, that to happen? In Psalm 73, the psalmist Asaph, talks about how he sees the wicked getting blessing after blessing while the righteous man uh, is humbled severely and, and has such difficulty in life. But he always has to remember that God is in control and that quick is the fall of the unrighteous man. We have a foundation built on Christ, on solid ground. And so when we fall, we fall to the rock, rock of ages. But those people, they fall to their doom and destruction. Next one is, God is truly the God of second, third, and fourth chances. God is so faithful to us. God is so merciful to us. How many times have you slipped up and God has still remained God and good? I always think back to uh, the, the books of the prophets and how God is just pleading with them to repent and that all these things will go away if they just repented and turned to him. And that's God's heart for us if we would just repent and turn to him. He would take care of us, provide for us. So God will give you a second and third and fourth chance. God is not waiting for you just to slip up to, to hurt you or kill you. Trust in God. God will make a way for you. The next one is this. God will allow us to be tested in such a way that to the world it may look like we are sinning. But in reality, we're not. And most people will not understand what's going on in our lives. I personally went through this. I was accused of all sorts of things. People in my old church were accusing me of horrible things just because I was going through difficult parts of my life. I had an eating disorder and people accusing me of getting drunk and all these horrible sinful things, yet none of them extended a hand to help me. I was jobless for a long period of time. I was doing freelance work, but I was jobless. And and no one showed mercy. No one showed compassion for me. I can think of to Mary, the mother of Jesus. She looked like she had sinned with Joseph. And even going back to Hannah, that she had a reproach against her. And that she looked like she was somehow sinning because her womb uh, was closed up. That she was barren. And they accused her of sin. And there's so many other examples of that in the Bible. And I think most notably would be Job, accused of sinning by all his friends in his life. But in reality, he was just righteous and he was being severely tested. And the next one, I think is very similar to this. To the world, trusting in God seems like utter foolishness and it looks like foolishness. How many times have you gone through difficulty and you're saying, I'm trusting God and they're like, give up. People are telling you, God is not with you. But you know deep down that God is with you and he's working on your behalf. Putting our faith in God seems like complete foolishness to the world. Thinking that God can take us from a desperate situation and elevate us to blessing is complete foolishness to them. I went from complete and utter desperation to God providing every single one of my needs and wants. I went from jobless and without a place of my own to getting married, engaged, having our own beautiful place, and having a daughter. God can do it. God did it for me. He can do it for you. And this is the last one. In God's silence, he wants us to cling tighter to him, press in further to him, praise him louder, and pray for the strength to trust in him. It's not easy. It's not easy at all to trust in the Lord especially in the lives that we have. Some people have it much easier than others, and others have it much more difficult. But hear me when I say this. 
when God seems far off, we have to continue to put our trust and hope in him. Let's close out with this psalm, Psalm 55. As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He rescues me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God, who is enthroned from of old, who does not change, he will hear them and humble them, because they have no fear of God. Cast your cares on the Lord. He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. But you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of decay. The bloodthirsty and deceitful will not live out half their days. But as for me, I trust in you. So as you go through this week, as you continue to struggle, as you continue to call out to God, just remember and acknowledge that God is there for you. God is faithful and just. As Job says, my Redeemer lives. Our Redeemer lives. And he will sustain you. If you're struggling, sing the hymn out. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise Just to know Thus saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him How I've proved him more and more Jesus, Jesus Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him.